Uh, welcome everyone, Dr. Mandel with you. I wanna review a little bit about hyperlordosis of the lumbar spine. Normal lordosis of the lumbar spine looks somewhat like this. Here's a normal kyphosis of the thoracic and a normal lordosis of the cervical. We're concerned about people who have an increased lordosis as this gets more accentuated like this. And what's happening is when you have this, uh, we then start getting more instability particularly on the muscles, ligaments, and as well as those discs. Obviously, this will cause irritation of the nerve roots, which can lead to sciatica pain in the leg, tingling, numbness, cramping, as well as referred pain, not only in the buttocks and legs, but what about changes in the ovaries, the uh, intestines, uh, the male-female reproductive organs. As you see here, that these nerves in the lower back do affect those organs as well. So if there is irritation on those nerves, you're getting pinching on the nerve, even though you may not be experiencing pain, you can be experiencing dysfunction. So we're going to review a couple of important uh, stretches and exercises you can do to help combat that. Because generally when we have an increased uh, lumbar lordosis, we're looking more of an anterior pelvic tilt uh, so when the pelvic goes anterior, uh, you're going to get more of an accentuation. So we know when we have a increase of lordosis that goes hand in hand with an anterior pelvic tilt, we know we have tight hip flexors, iliopsoas muscles. We know we have tight erector spinae, as well as quadratus lumborum muscles. Uh, we have uh, weak uh, abdominals, weak gluteus maximus, as well as hamstrings. So let's look at the bowel mechanics. When you lay on your back here, you have a excessive increased lordosis because we have a increased anterior pelvic tilt. And so if we uh, bring it more into a posterior pelvic tilt like this, as we bring the legs closer to our abdominal area, like we're doing a sit up, you can see how that curve starts to come out. So obviously that is the key component now is we want to uh, bring our legs upwards to try to isolate and work those weakened muscles. So remember that everything compensates with one another, that when you have an increased lordosis, uh, you're gonna get changes in the thoracic spine, even changes in the lumbar spine, uh, which can lead to forward head posture and biomechanical instability. It's very important to isolate the primary causation because of the fact that many people have symptoms, you cannot just go directly to where it hurts or where the pain is. You have to find an underlying cause and remove it. Otherwise, those compensatory changes are never going to go away. And that's what we call chronic problems that people have, that people have to suffer with. So if you're on your back like this, put your hands around your ear, crunch, come up about 20 degrees, come back down. 20 degrees, come back down, just like this really strengthen those abdominal muscles. You don't want to go past 20, 25 degrees because you're going to start working your iliopsoas muscles. You could actually bend your knees and you can do it again because by bending the knees will actually help take out more of that lordosis. Okay. Um, I like to go ahead and take one leg and lift it up as I do it. You could do, you know, 10, 12 repetitions, couple sets. You could be creative. You can go the other end. Move your other leg like this as you come up. You'll really feel those abs work. You can be a real creative. You can turn on your side and just come up like this to work your obliques. Just little crunches. You don't have to come up a lot, okay? And you can come the other side, working your obliques. Very good. Don't pull too hard on your head. Just stabilize it. Those are excellent exercises. A nice simple one is just lay back. Bring your knees up to your chest and just hold it there. And you can go ahead and bring it up to the left and hold it there because by doing this, you are decreasing the curve in the lumbar spine and you're increasing those deep back muscles, those tight erector spinal muscles. Doing a posterior pelvic tilt by coming back like this. And um, as we bring the pelvic up and we straighten everything up from our torso here, and then we come back down we're actually putting our pelvic into extension as we bring it into a posterior tilt. Uh, because of the fact by doing this, we're actually not only strengthening the glutes, 
which are weak in the first place, but we're actually working the ligaments around the lumbopelvic and the sacroiliac joint. Uh, as you do this, just hold it about, you know, four or five, six seconds, and you'll do this exercise, like all of them, about 12 repetitions, a couple sets. Sleeping with your knees bent like this is excellent too. Uh, if you can spend six, eight hours a night and bringing your pelvic into a posterior pelvic tilt and holding that position, imagine how that's gonna help that, that uh, hyperlordosis. Uh, that is really important. Now the worst thing you could do is sleep on your stomach because by sleeping on your stomach, you're increasing that sway back, which is gonna make the condition worse. So if you're on your back, preferably fold up uh, a pillow and put it under your knees and keep those knees bent because again, you're spending another six to eight hours a night out of 24 hours a day, putting that pelvic into a posterior pelvic tilt, which is gonna be uh, significantly better in helping to heal this condition. So utilize these strategies. I really think that this will really help you uh, from your underlying weakened lower back. Uh, what's really important is see my video below. Um, I am attaching about anterior pelvic tilt, very comprehensive. You can utilize many of those exercises in there as well to help accelerate the healing process. Share this video on your social media. I really think many will be able to benefit from this. Uh, leave your comments below. Check me out, motivational doc on Facebook. And most of all, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.